Do you have too many managers in your organization? I was just reading an article that came out in September in the Atlantic, and it made me really think about what's going on in business today, especially in big organizations. I mean, they even cited that 30% of the workforce is made up of managers. And here's a key statistic. Some of those managers don't even have any reports. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Why do we have managers just to have managers? See, Harvard Business did a review of businesses that had managers of at least 4.7, right around there, 4.7 reports. And yes, 4.7 doesn't mean a whole person, but you know that means somebody had five, some people had three, you know, they did an average basically. But here's the deal. Three trillion dollars lost in the bureaucracy of having too many levels. That's pretty scary when you think about it, right? There's too much bureaucracy. That's why things go slow in bigger organizations and smaller companies can actually go and maneuver and outmaneuver a lot of these big organizations. That's where you saw like Amazon come onto the stage a long time ago, but they're getting kind of slower as they move on because they're starting to get infrastructure, they're putting up bigger buildings, and they have so much. And you're seeing articles about how negative uh, work environment is over at Amazon as opposed to what it used to be. And not to pick on Amazon, there's there's tons of different organizations that you could talk about. I mean, PepsiCo, to minimize, and they know every seven years they're going to get extra fluff. And I've had some people that I know really well that work there. After every seven years, they know that they're going to get some extra fluff. You know what they did? They got rid of people. That's right. They got rid of of employees and not by performance base or whatnot it was basically out of a hat well that kind of drives a little bit of scarcity right when you're when you're thinking about it of like i'm a high performer and if i were to get fired that'd be detrimental to you know who i thought i was right just because you know it's just a name and a hat basically what does that do for your culture there's other organizations that would go out and say hey we're gonna get rid of the bottom 10 percent every year well, what does that do for your corporation well what it does is it has people not helping each other because they're worried about being part of that bottom 10 percent because after a certain point of getting rid of that bottom 10 percent you start affecting the really good people and yeah your hope is that you're going to be running more efficient but that's not necessarily the case you're going to have a bad culture there so let's talk about some of the things that we need to do, what's going on with the management, what we really need, and how to build some influence and some good culture. In this video, we're going to talk about what we need to have as far as your management leadership kind of style and what you need to be focused in on and how it's going to affect your culture. And then I'm going to give you a few tips on how to build influence. So managers are designed to manage people and processes. What does that mean? Well, they're made to keep everything moving, kind of like a flowing river, right? You want it to go and just move forward. You don't want it to get stagnant because what happens when you have a stagnant pond, right? Algae grows, all that stuff. It gets really nasty. You can't drink the water. But we need to make sure that we're growing, right? Well, managements by design are really not designed to do that. They're inefficient. They're not designed to increase performance. And what do we all want in business? We want to be growing, right? We want that ramped curve. You know, most of the time when you look at a chart, it's kind of like this, kind of moving up, like the stock market. But we really want to have growth. Well, management, especially in remote environments, is very difficult okay a lot of organizations have all these extra layers of bureaucracy with managers i mean you have managers senior managers directors senior directors vps all over the place and what does it do for you well it creates a lot of bureaucracy i've even seen organizations that have sales managers with no report i mean who are you really managing yourself i mean that's pretty bad so we need to really understand that because if we keep up with having all these extra layers in this 
uh, bureaucracy, it's actually going to be kind of like a freighter. And what happens when you're trying to turn a freighter or it gets stuck, right? It looks kind of like this and it takes a lot of resources to get it unstuck. Well, that's going to take away from your growth, right? So what do we need? Well, we need to have a leadership mindset. And I know we need to have managers because they're still going to manage the people, especially in assembly lines, right? We need to be able to monitor the people and touch the people. But for the upper levels, do we need to have so much fluff and bureaucracy? What is it really netting us? Can we see the profits there? Again, 4.7 people reporting to these people, and it's like a $3 trillion loss in inefficiency. And that just drives, I mean, it. if it doesn't scare you, I mean, that is pretty big number. We need to make sure that we're working forward and moving the needle to grow. So what does that look like? Well, we need to have more leaders, okay? So what do we have to have for leaders? Well, those leaders need to be the example, right? They go the way, they show the way to those people. They invest into their team consistently. They're constantly adding value, that's right. They need to be doing it at least once a year. That's what I keep telling people. Got to invest, bring your teams together and invest in them. If we're not investing in our teams, what's going to happen? Well, it's kind of like that pond that doesn't have any flow, it just gets stagnant. There's no growth. So we need to invest in our teams consistently. And that is, you know, bringing them all together. They need to be able to build their relationships. They need to learn together. They also need to teach each other. Why? Because the best way to learn is actually to teach. So we need to make sure that we're having that leadership mindset of putting value on people, adding value, training people up so that they can like level up and get better whether it's negotiation styles, whether it's the sales process, whether it's building influence, whatever it is, we need to be doing that, adding value. I also tell people, do once a year, do debriefs as well, where you bring the team in after the training to debrief together, do some competitive analysis, see what your teams are going. And I know Simon Sinek has like, you know, you're sitting there worried about what your competition is. And you need to be doing the infinite game instead of, you know, the finite game. But here's the deal. You also need to understand what's going on because you got to be able to talk to those things because your customers are studying this. You should as well. You need to know what your competition's doing, not necessarily to fight against it and belittle them, but just to know where you excel so you can just keep focused on where you're going, what your mission is, so it keeps you going forward with your customers. The other thing that happens is when you start investing into your teams with this leadership mindset, you know what happens? You're actually moving more in an offensive matter instead of a defensive matter. See, we want to be an offense. To grow, we need to have an offense. If you look at football, for instance, most of the defense don't score all the points. It's the offense that does. So we need to be hiring and recruiting and onboarding the right kind of people. But we need to be constantly adding value to those people. Otherwise, they're going to leave, right? And some leaders right here will go, wait a second, what happens if I invest in all of this time into this team and they leave? Well, it's been said many times by people that are smarter than me, what happens if you don't invest in them and they stay? Right? You're gonna get that stagnant pond. So we need to make sure that we're engaging and investing into those people. Because if they see value being added to them and they see that you really care about them, well, they're going to be more engaged. They're going to lean in. They're going to want to stick around and help you and stay with you. Sometimes, even when they're not getting paid as much. Okay, I stuck with an awesome leader for a long time when I could be making more money because I was constantly learning. When I stopped learning and the investments weren't there, well, I decided to move on. It was time for me to grow and expand myself. So I did, I moved on. But while I was there, I worked my tail off for that person. And I care about them and I respect them still to this day. So we want 
to increase our influence, which has an impact on our culture. Because when we're adding investment into our culture and showing people they matter, well, the culture grows, trust grows. And here's the deal, when trust goes up, speed goes up, costs go down. What happened to your profits? Yeah, that's right, they went up. So we need to make sure we're doing that. So let's talk about how we build influence. I'm gonna break it down very simple. We need to make sure on every interaction, we answer three questions. That's right, three questions. And here's the three questions. Do I like you? Do I trust you? And how can you help me? That is what your reports are asking on every interaction. And they're gauging your answers on how much they're going to add back in and be engaged. So if they don't like us, they don't trust us, and they don't think that we can help them, well, they're not gonna rely on us, and they're gonna get stagnant, they're gonna check out, efficiencies are gonna go down, and they may leave the organization, which means we have to hire somebody else on, and we have to go and you know get them built up, up to speed. Sometimes it takes as much as six months. So if we focus in on answering those three questions and adding value to people, and getting rid of some of these extra layers that we don't have, our organizations are actually going to make more money. We're gonna have lower overhead, we're gonna be more efficient, people are gonna be more engaged. What happens? Yeah, profits go up. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All my information is below. I'd be glad to talk with you about this video or anything else, any of the topics I talk about. I'm here to help you guys, and I am glad that you had this time with this video. We'll see you next time.